Hey, Sean Jantz here, and I'm going to do a quick final plan for Thursday, April 19th, and I'm going to do it on Slash.js, which is the S&P 500 and the other indices that you can find on Nadex. And I'm going to make this trade plan really, really short, and the reason for that is because uh, we didn't get a ton of movement. I mean, price actually didn't go anywhere from last night's trade plan. And so it's pretty much the same thing. And so I don't need to go over a whole lot. You, all you got to do is go back and watch last night's really quick. And it's pretty much the same structure. Um, so you can, every single night, I always start on the four hour chart, as you can see right here, four hour chart. And I'm looking overbought, oversold, or equilibrium. And we can't be any more overbought. We're, we're literally chilling right here at this nice little 61.8, uh, which is the golden ratio retracement level. You can see today we just formed reversal stars, reversal stars, and then you can see how overbought we are. So what's the bias on this chart? Obviously, the bias is to the downside. I mean, it's not, it's, and can the chart continue growing higher? Of course it can. The market can do whatever it wants. Our job, though, is just to f try and find some biases to, to help us win, you know, 70, 75% of the trades. So we're pretty over, I mean, not pretty, we're overbought. And the higher we go, I want to be looking for my sell triggers and I can also try and catch some breakouts to the downside and spread this chart lower. And I can find some targets. 2700 is going to be a big, big target. 2700 has been a huge magnet on this chart. Huge. So we can use 2700. And then we do have a huge, we have a large target. I don't think we'll make it there. But we do have a large target from 85 to 80. I'm not sure we'll make it there though. And so you can, don't get me wrong. This chart's very bullish as you can see. So you can still definitely, we can still definitely be buyers on this chart, but we gotta make sure that we're buying pullbacks, buying pullbacks. We can't be buying up here, that's insane. We're too overbought to be buying, okay? And so we gotta make sure that if we do buy, we're buying pullbacks. So now what we do, uh, we're, what we, we move to the 15 day, 15 minute plot chart. What we're doing here is we're just looking for structure. We're looking for the best places to buy, the best places to sell. We're looking for support, resistance, supply, and demand zones. And what I always do is I start exactly where price is and then I plan. What am I going to do or not do at every single zone? I got to have a plan. What am I going to do if this chart runs higher? And then I got to have a plan. What am I going to do if this chart starts running lower? Uh, and obviously the bias is to the downside, but I still got to have a plan if we go higher because you never know. Don't forget that we, we're in the full swing of earnings. And so expect some uh, not necessarily non-technical days where you're saying, oh, I should have sold up. I know, but there's earnings. So don't forget that stuff, okay? And so uh, clearly you can see just how bullish this chart is, and um, but we're really overbought in the big picture. And so but let's first talk about if we go higher. You can see how we have a nice little supply zone here on that. Uh, it's pretty much, we'll call it 18 to 23. We'll just go ahead and call it, yeah, 18 up to that plus 0.5. So if we do get a nice little kiss, uh, I'm not against looking for potential, you know, sell triggers off of that. And if we start trading up above plus 0.5 tomorrow, I'm going to put question marks up there. The reason I'm going to put question marks up there is because we start trading up above plus 0.5 and holding higher lows. By no means, you can't be buying that. Expect to get your railroaded if you buy up there. Obviously, you want to be looking for sell triggers above that plus 0.5, but... You gotta ask yourself, we have it, there's no structure to the left. So what do you do? When in doubt, you stay out. If you if you like it, I'm not your daddy. So if you like it, you wanna do it, go for it. But I'm just telling you, there's no structure. So you gotta be prepared. If we start trading up there, there's no structure. Okay, look elsewhere, some Forex stuff, any other, uh, I'll be looking elsewhere if we do start going up above that plus 0.5. So let's say I sell right here, continues going higher, I lose the trade, I'm not gonna chase it, okay? Um, I, I can possibly uh, sell another week. I'm actually in a weekly right now. I can possibly sell another one. Just all depends on the prices, okay? Now if we go lower, which is what the bias is. Obviously we have that huge 2700 target, negative and a half deviation, but you can't just be sell. I'm gonna start zooming in here so you can see this. You can't just be selling randomly. We gotta wait for some strength, okay? You'll, you'll also, one thing I need to show you also, we got a massive demand zone. Uh, right there. I'm not even sure what the what they saw right there. I mean, that was just a huge demand zone. And then you can see the demand right there as well. So we do got to be prepared for that. I don't know if that's going to give us a hiccup on our way to the negative 
and a half, but you just gotta be mindful of it, okay? So what I'm gonna be looking for, I wanna show you some opportunities for some potential spreads and at the money uh, binaries, is I wanna use 2707 and a half as the breakout, line in the sand, breakout, right? I, want the, I need these bears to show me some strength that they're here to play, right? So we need to use that as the breakout. Now I start finding my five minute or one minute chart lower highs. There's my entry, there's another possible entry. And then I have all of this room for a pass. Basically, I'd be riding that four hour candle sell trigger down. That makes sense. So that was the bird's eye view in the four hour chart. Now here's our worm's eye view trying to find our entries and our TPs. So a first take profit would be, like I said, 2,700. Take profit right there. Might be able to leave a runner for that negative and a half right there. So pretty cool. When you have BTG charts, it makes it very simple. You know exactly where to enter, where to TP and all that other stuff. It's very, very visual. Okay, as far as buying opportunities tomorrow, I'm not against that negative and a half. The thing is though, if you do buy that negative and a half, make it quick, 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 quick. Four hour charts really overbought, so you gotta make that quick, but it's not a bad, because obviously this chart is very bullish, so it's not bad. But you just gotta be careful, because that four hour chart could drop hammer. Remember that big target I just showed you? What was that big target? Remember, 85 to 80, remember that? So if this sucker starts taking off, It'll want to cycle back down to this right there. Okay, and what does that put us at? That puts us at the negative one deviation. See how when you see how you use the bird's eye view four hour chart to help you in how far a market can move, deviations, Keltner channels, see how it all comes together, right? So the second breakout is 2695. You start getting through that and holding lower highs. You might be able to continue selling lower and targeting, you know, 85, um, sorry, there's 85 and then 83, negative one would be your final TP. As far as buying opportunities go, uh, I, my favorite would be the negative one, okay? Now before, I, this is gonna get a little confusing, but this is just all, this is what you need to be doing. You gotta understand all this. I do wanna show you the one hour chart cycle really quick, because our one hour chart cycle is really, really ugly. That gets really ugly. Look at this. We did have a one-hour candle sell trigger today. It did make its way to the red Keltner and kind of popped off of it. Uh, but this one-hour chart's going to start getting oversold, you know, right around here, which puts us around 2,700. So what does that mean? We're going to be pretty oversold on, on the one-hour chart. We're going to be pretty oversold. So you got to make sure that you see everything. And, and my point on that was, yes, we do have a target down here. Um, but if you try and sell more, this one hour chart could buy trigger on you and whipsaw you. So just gotta see it all. Use your content, use your indicators, trade small, right? And it'll really help you and record yourself trading and I can help you, okay? Um, I just wanna quickly show you some of these other charts. One of my favorite charts for tomorrow is, is RTY. Look at this. To the exact tick, plus 0.5 is where those bears sold off on Wednesday. So if we can get a nice little kiss, absolutely little double tap right there i can look for sell triggers there as far as to the downside you would use 1585 as your breakout so 1585 breakout hold lower high right there and then you target wednesday negative and a half okay buying opportunities right off of that negative and a half you can see the demand right there from tuesday and then you would go ahead and use roughly 1579 as the second breakout get through continue holding lower highs run this sucker all the way back down to that negative one. So you'll notice how on Tuesday, see that big volume spike right there on Tuesday? Price likes to get sucked back to those original volume spikes. Now, um, I'm not saying that it will absolutely make it there. You know, I'm just telling you that if these bears do start taking off, everybody and their dog's gonna be targeting that right there. So you can use that to your advantage. And then you can also look for pause, proper buy triggers off of that negative one. Uh, as well. Uh, I do want to quickly show you slash and Q. Slash and Q is pretty much sitting at some, uh, it's sitting right now, literally, uh, at the um, supply zone. And so one thing I'm a little bit different than the other charts on NQ I want to show you is that there will be possible opportunity for an 80% roll to the downside. So this chart's very overbought on the, on the big picture. So if these bears start taking off, you've got a nice little value rate box for a possible 80% roll. Be mindful of maybe a quick hiccup right there on set. So there's a couple ways you can play this. You can get through, hold lower high, take profit on set, then you wait, 
for another breakout, hold lower high, second entry, and then take your profits right there at VA low to complete the 80% roll. As far as buying opportunities tomorrow, look at that negative and a half, literally to the exact tick. Negative and a half is where that Wednesday morning V was. And so as far, I don't wanna be buying here at VA low. That's really bad context, I don't wanna do that. We're too overbought to be buying at 68.20. That's no way. I don't want to. I don't want to own the Nasdaq at 68.20. No, thank you. Okay. Um, I'd rather look for buying opportunities here off of that, and then of course this is the second breakout. Get through, continue holding lower highs, and this could. And same thing as RTY. See that Tuesday volume spike. Price likes to get sucked back to those original volume spikes. So comment if you have any questions. Reach out to me or Ryan Smith and make sure you're taking pictures of all of your trades and post them in the group and in the chat room so that you can get feedback from me and from others.